So where do you go from here? Everybody is sacrificed, it seems. The sun is male, representing masculinity. The moon is female, representing femininity. Oh, so we actually get an explanation for this. Then the two genders become one. In other words, the union represents a perfect being. Huh. So then what's a perfect being? Does that mean immortality? Hmm. Or maybe something even greater. But what could be greater than that? I don't know. Maybe... Maybe God or something. Wow, Ed and Al actually snipped this out as kids. <laughs> you have no choice but to be absorbed! So he's absorbing a perfect being. Absorbing God. This feels so legit. This feels like a movie. Something about it. It's totally different. I guess we're not getting an opening. This is the opening. I am extremely concerned <laughs> for the characters that this show has worked so hard to get me to love. Oh god, that was awful. I thought she was gonna move or something. <laughs> Izumi would survive, wouldn't she? Is everyone alright? <laughs> what happened? Not everyone. You have done well, my faithful sacrifices. <sighs> You mean you actually did it? Yes. I have done this. <laughs> acquire God. And when you acquire God, you must become shirtless. <laughs> if you had the power of God, would you wear a shirt? I don't think so. He looks great though, not gonna lie. Does this mean everyone was turned into a philosopher's stone? How many lives were sacrificed for this? What is the value of a human the soul? Is a lot. Large country, at least 50 million people. What is the value of 50 million souls? God. Episode 61, He Who Would Swallow God. Damn you. The whole tone of the show just shifted. The power of God is now in my control. With that, I can do anything. For instance, I can create a sun right in the palm of my hand. That's amazing. All right, a couple things. I was really wondering what this episode would look like because there was a possibility for me in my mind that if he was God, he would just be gone. You know what I mean? It's interesting to me that he returned to his human form in a way. He seems to be very much the same person, just with enhanced powers. I can't help but wonder what now? What do you do with this even? Try to fulfill your human desires? You know what I mean? I feel like Father's really lonely actually. I feel like a lot of this is motivated by just sadness. All that being said, you know, looking for positives in characters, props to him for actually pulling it off to the point where he can make a son. <laughs> We talk a lot about father's sins, but his virtues are patience, diligence, intelligence, maybe. Shall I turn its flame loose in here? What do you think? Oh, something's going wrong. Your plan for binding God to this world was a flawed one. Tell him, Hohenheim. We plotted against you since the moment you set it in motion. We no, no longer have, have bodies, bodies to return to, to but the people of Amestra still have the chance to resume their physical forms. Yes, we know what we must do. Let us return their souls back to their bodies. It is what Hohenheim asks of us. I still enjoy the fact that Hohenheim went out of his way to like learn all of these Xerxian souls. Father, meanwhile, is like, get this stuff out of me. <laughs> they will not activate without a circle. That's a basic rule of alchemy. We do have a circle. It's one of enormous power. Oh, so we use the souls to make a activated. alchemical circle? Even if something should happen to incapacitate me. The moon's shadow cast on nice. the world by the eclipse. We're starting now, Cohen <laughs> So he literally like planted the souls. It's time you remember your place. In the <laughs> it's rare to see Hohenheim be so riled up. But did he take his hands out of his pockets? Are those the 50 million Amestrian souls getting released? This is so crazy. Alright, it looks like they're getting returned. Yeah, there we go. Oh, thank god, the baby's alright. <laughs> Oh, it's the music. Well, that was a short-lived God plan. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, it it's like... sort of indescribable. But like being trapped. glad they're all right. <laughs> yeah, he's still a threat, though. It's not over. I can't hold on much longer. Ed L. No there you go. Dad, hang on. Can't you even do this? 
This feels good. <laughs> I can only do so much, boys. I'm just a decrepit old man. But I'll give it everything these old bones can do. There you go. He's still fighting Bradley. I thought the science of alchemy was a horror to the eyes of his father, the one you believe to be the creator of all things. Right, right. That's what he used to say. Have you abandoned your god? You would leave him so easily? It's amazing how Bradley is still able to fight this well, considering that he's like basically on the verge of death, it seems. I get a similar feeling from this that I get from Kimberly taunting people. It almost feels like Bradley is just trying to push Scar to his limits, not necessarily that he looks down on him. I remember Bradley made a comment to the leader of the Ishvalans when they surrendered to him about how God is just like a refuge of the weak or something like that. That, I guess, is another way Bradley differs greatly from Father. You know, Father's all about harnessing the power of God, and Bradley's been helping him, but it seems like he's more interested in his own human realization, if that makes sense. I feel like in his way, Bradley is falling on the human side more than he probably realizes. He's like ultimate Bradley. This is amazing. Surely somewhere in the darkest depths of your heart, you began to believe that there was no God in this world at all! What's your answer, Scar? <laughs> oh my god! Bradley, man, even the way he went out. I myself have never believed in faith or God. If they exist, perhaps this is their way of divine justice and providence. Any last words you'd like to say? None. Such a sad life. Tell me, Bradley, was there anyone who you loved? Any friends? Your wife? His wife. My wife. Yeah. Are you saying you have nothing? No message for her? When she finds out what you are. Your trivial words of sorrow, of love and guilt mean nothing to me, young lady. My wife understands. She is the woman that I chose to live by my side. There are no more words that need to pass between us now. That's what it means to be the wife of the Bureau. <laughs> and now you've spent all your time asking useless questions and lost your opportunity. Opportunity for vengeance. What a shame. Man, he goes out with a taunt. I lived my life by forever following the path that had been set for me. Thanks to the idiosyncrasies of humanity. It was, at least, a life worth living for. Interesting. Maybe even a life worth dying for. Whoa. It's so complex. I love it. Because Bradley is, you know, he's evil. But I feel like that death paid him a lot of respect as a character. He didn't repent. He wasn't fearful. He wasn't sorrowful. He died seeming to have acceptance and closure for his life and for everything he's done, which is so crazy, but also kind of perfect for Bradley because he's an awesome character. Even in his villainy, he earned so much respect. And it seems like my hunch was correct that he actually, you know, he does respect humanity, that he did enjoy being a human. As you guys know, Bradley is one of the characters that I've been most curious about for the duration of the show. I had a suspicion for a while that he would ultimately end up living for himself. And the way I imagined that was him eventually going against father. And while he didn't do that ultimately, I think the last monologue confirms for me that in a way, he was sort of living his own life and he wasn't a homunculus puppet. One thing that's weird about Bradley, right, is that he's wrath, but we, we rarely see him wrathful. And I wonder if part of that wasn't the fact that he became, in some way, a realized enough to subvert his sin or to overcome it. Yeah, it was an act for the country, for the military, but you can't even fake that without some degree of self-mastery. There's something about Bradley that's so old school. He's like the ultimate order. Follow your duty, rely on yourself, no time for frivolities, no sentiment, no room for God, take things into your own hands. In some ways, he's like the ultimate male archetype, maybe in a more traditional sense, but that is not wrath, right? That's human. And he got to live a life where he established his values and then 
meet the world with those values, like a lot of the other characters. And so I think that contributes to the fact that his death feels like an honorable moment. It's not pitiful like Envy, right? Because it seems that even though he was father's puppet to a large degree, he developed enough autonomy to live as though it were his own life and to find meaning in his own existence, which makes him greater than a homunculi or just a homunculi. It's really great stuff. And I'm satisfied with that ending for him, even though it's not quite what I expected. It's still meaningful in the way that I wanted it to be for him as a human. He doesn't need to become a good guy to become realized, as weird as that is. Brother, I cannot lie. The hatred within me has not perished. And yet I'm about to help a mistress, the very object of my hatred. You spoke of positive streams and negative streams. Thanks to the life I have lived, I carry both within me. Very true. I wonder which way I will flow. Wow. Right. They helped him set that up. That's what they were doing. The reverse circle. It's coming! Yeah! There you go. Ed getting involved. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> been to rubble. Father really loves his house. Is Umi making me nervous over there? Yeah, he did get a moment of silence card. Scar and Scar's brother. Oh no. I feel like they're about to be reunited. A lot of times it seems like shows feel like once a character has done wrong, even if they reform and start to do good, they still have to die. But I kind of hope Scar survives. What was that? Did you use Alkahestry? No, it's something else. Something my brother developed. His brother's research notes. My brother researched the science of alchemy. Alchemists weren't able to use their power to its full measure. There was an inhibiting component interfering with the connection between the alchemist and that energy. I sensed that when I came to this country. Yeah, all of the Xingyi's people did. Ah, how do you like this, huh? <laughs> I love all these how you like this comments from Ed. Is it really true? You made a circle that returned everyone's souls? That's right. And it worked. He really perfectly. did. Yeah. After that, Scar created a reverse circle will correct the corrupted alchemy of this country. Wow. It was Scar's brother, through tireless research... Scar's unnamed brother, saving the world. ...the existence of the nationwide transmutation circle. Using that as a base, he applied his knowledge of Alka history and developed what is known as a reverse transmutation circle. This circle would render the Philosopher's Stone of Amestris ineffective, thus enabling the alchemist here to once again harness tectonic energy to its fullest extent. Amazing that Scar's unnamed brother ends up saving the world. And him rescuing Scar made all of this possible. His sacrifice. One of the most important characters who has no name. So does that make these characters more powerful? He'll run out of energy! Yeah, and when will that be? I'm not sure, but we have to keep on trying! Here, take this! Show him, Izumi. Look who it is. That's exactly the tub I took a bath in. Oh yeah. The greed juice. Get out of the way, greed. And that's how father became a statue. Or not. He really does look like Sephiroth. Like blonde Sephiroth. Lieutenant Hawkeye? Major Armstrong. <laughs> father casually flies past. He's going to try to make another Philosopher's Stone. That's true. Until you beat him, he sort of has unlimited resources. I didn't expect to be so useless. Brother! Not your fault. Ow. Go on ahead! Seems our friend here still wants me to stick around. Come on, Al, let's go. Don't let that thing beat you, Ed. The confidence. Ed's got this. My sight is gone. Lieutenant, how are your injuries? Don't think about me. Just worry about yourself for once. Your eyes. Lieutenant, no one does that in this show. Can you still fight? Yes, sir. See, Roy hasn't lost his vision. His real vision. That's wrath. I know, it's crazy. I see. So they finally got him. 
You know what's crazy to think about too is that I mean there were a lot of things that contributed to his death, but one of the biggest ones was an unnamed soldier, right? The soldier at Briggs would just happen to shoot him. Well, I guess the biggest impact was probably the buccaneer foo combo, but still there's something cool about the fact that just a random soldier was one of the elements of Bradley's demise considering how little regard he had for his people. Bastard dies with that peaceful look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird, right? Explain it to me. Why are you so eager to be his willing lapdog? He's wearing you ragged, well, breaking you down. Play to his he pride. Even care. <laughs> Ed's gonna win with words. Father does it. I am not a puny weakling like you are. I am one of the homunculi. Triggered. This container won't last much longer. But still, like my father is, you are of Hohenheim's bloodline. So we're virtually brothers. Which means Edward Is he gonna try Edward, to take Ed's body? I your container. Your body belongs to me! What? You can't have it, Pride. I won't let you take this body. It's not a good fit for a homunculus. Whoa, Kimberly! There's no way! How could you maintain your individuality among this tempest of souls? Kimberly's just too strong, man. You call this a tempest? Oh, stop. You're going to make <laughs> The bitterness that all of these voices contain soothes me like a lullaby. <laughs> why are you interfering? Kimberly, why? Not by choice. I was perfectly content, but when you decided to throw away your honor as a homunculus, you forced me to step in. <laughs> oh my god. Even in death. Even in death, he, he's true to himself. This guy cares so much about intellectual authenticity that it brings him back from the dead. <laughs> that is so perfect. You speak of your precious pride, that quality for which you were named. But then you suddenly find yourself in grave danger and you seek to escape into the body of a human, the lower life form that you so despise. It's pathetic. You're a disgrace. Oof. If you think that, then you still don't understand Edward Elric. Kimberly understands, though. Kimberly is awake, man. Impossible. He's turned himself into a philosopher's stone, and I was his way inside me. Thank you for the exposition, but I needed that. Pretty cool. <laughs> Goodbye, Kimberly, and thank you. Whoa. But he didn't kill him. So this is your real body. Whoa, did he just like reincarnate him? Once this is all over, I'm gonna have to apologize to Mrs. Bradley. You can wait right there, you foolish boy. That scene, man, that scene was so incredible. There was just so much to that. That was such an epic return of Kimberly. I'm so glad we got to see him again. I know I said this a lot, but it's just amazing how many mixed feelings I have about the characters in this show. Like, Kimberly's just the worst, but that was the best. You know, that was just so great. He's the man. He's like, yeah, I was fine being dead, but when you contradicted yourself, I knew I had to come back. <laughs> I had to correct this injustice, this injustice of inconsistency of thought. I feel like Kimberly is the physical manifestation of the word actually. You know what I mean? Actually. And I love how he understood Edward Elric to know that Ed wasn't planning on killing Pride. And then Ed's actual move was amazing. So we've seen him figure out that he could be a Philosopher's Stone, right? And so he used his own power to do something like reincarnate Pride, which is such a great thing because we got Mrs. Bradley to think about. And now it seems like she'll be able to actually have baby Salim, which is kind of the perfect solution to that and is consistent with Ed and will earn Kimberly's respect who then just gracefully fades away with a hat tip. <laughs> it was perfection. That scene was was just amazing on so many levels. Oh, look at him. Now I don't have to feel bad about thinking Salim is cute. Wow. Man, that episode was something else. The determination. 
so I think out of the finale so far, that's my favorite episode. It just felt like there was so much great stuff in there. We had the Bradley fight and death, which I feel in a very short time sort of gave a, a, a satisfying resolution to Bradley's character for me. I get some immediate relief knowing that all the characters I love are not dead. Thanks to Scar's brother. You get shirtless father looking amazing. And then that whole like Pride Kimberly sequence, that was just perfect. You know, I can't really ask for more than that. It was so satisfying and so cool. And Ed looking like such a badass and Pride being defeated by Pride, which is another poetic homunculus death. And that's it for the homunculi, right? Yeah, crazy. It's just Father now, who has lost a lot of pieces of himself. Father is becoming more and more fragmented, while the other characters seem to be getting more and more unified, not only in themselves, but also with each other. Overall, it's just so much fun and so engaging from start to finish. We went about as far as we could go down into the side of loss and pessimism, but this definitely turns a very triumphant corner. Feels like we're wrapping up. We got three episodes left. Things that are unresolved are defeating Father, which will happen, like he's on the way down, but also, and a bigger point of fear, is what's gonna happen with Al, because he rejected the chance to have his body back, but we know he can't sustain this form. And so I hope they're able to achieve that. And I hope that they're able to achieve that without Ed sacrificing himself because I feel like that is a possibility. But anyway, that's the end of episode 61. One of my favorite episodes so far. I'll see you next time for the start of the final three episodes, as crazy as that is.